Culver Academies continues to strive for excellence in areas of sustainability and ecology on its properties today. But Culver's ecological roots run far deeper than many might guess to the beginnings of the school itself. Today, efforts to make Culver a model of green leadership are varied. They range from geothermal HVAC in the last four major building renovations on campus to a much lauded food recovery initiative in the Lay Dining Center, which also buys a percentage of its food from regionally produced sources to a campus-wide recycling program. A rain garden and pollinator prairie with apiary have been established on Culver land, which also hosts the state of Indiana's first constructed wetland aimed at proper stewardship of beautiful Lake Maxincucky. Culver has long supported the Lake Maxincucky Environmental Council and more recently established its own Alumni Sustainability Council, which is helping steward solar energy initiatives at Culver and a thorough forestry conservation project on its land, with a portion of that land dedicated to a natural outdoor biology lab. Another recent addition is Culver Girls Academy's Sustainability Committee and Prefect. And in a sense, today's green focus brings things full circle for Culver. Increased urbanization in the late 19th century fed into the concerns of innovators like Culver founder Henry Harrison Culver, who believed in the importance of outdoor learning and physical wellness and discipline for youth. He found an enthusiastic champion in Culver Commandant and later Superintendent L. R. Genelette, whose strong belief in the preparedness movement of the day led to his becoming something of a national spokesman as speaker, writer, and familiar figure. Similar concerns were percolating in England, where Sir Robert Baden Powell's scouting movement was fast becoming an international success, rooted as it was in the importance of people, especially children, experiencing, valuing, and stewarding nature and natural resources. Baden Powell's 1911 visit to the Culver campus helped inspire Genelette to launch the Woodcraft Camp the following year, with American Boy Scouts founding legend Dan Beard creating and leading the program. I want to meander in the meadow, see the sunbeams kissing the dew. Among many naturalists and conservationists visiting or working at the camp was another giant, Ernest Thompson Seton, also a Boy Scouts pioneer, an internationally regarded artist, conservationist, and prolific author of nature-themed fiction, some of which has been adapted into Walt Disney films and animated cartoons. Seton was a member of the Woodcraft Camp staff and an ongoing guest of the camp. When the shadows start him to fall, we used to meander in the Also growing from Culver's Woodcraft program was the creation in 1930 of renowned outdoor spokesman Bill Vaught's Bird Sanctuary Project, which garnered headlines across the country. I want to meander in the meadow, be a kid for only a Around the same time, Culver hosted a DNR managed face hatchery in the woods west of campus, part of the school's early commitment to conservation and lake stewardship. Jenna Latt and the Culver family and board, meanwhile, continued to seek new ways to weave ecology into Culver life and efforts. As early as 1911, legendary outdoor landscape architect Jens Jensen, a collaborator with Frank Lloyd Wright and giant in his field, visited Culver's campus and made a series of recommendations toward utilizing the natural beauty and resources of the shoreline, flora and fauna, and lake to help craft the beauty of the Culver campus of today. Among his other campus innovations was the creation of the beloved first class ring. In his own right, Genelette experimented with the benefits of nature for vibrant health in Culver youth by way of endeavors like the open air barrack. Each night, cadets in the building pulled down an inside screen 
and pulled up an outdoor one to facilitate sleeping in the elements. While not a long-lived experiment, the project was typical of the superintendent's firm belief in the value of nature and impacting the whole person for the better. There's a winding trail through the meadow grass. It could be argued, in fact, that ecology, conservation, and the right relationship of humans to the natural environment surrounding them have been central to the ethos of Culver, whether in its summer or boarding programs since Henry Harrison Culver first sought refuge in natural beauty on the shores of the second largest natural lake in Indiana nearly 150 years ago. Over the hilltop and through the dale, treading the winding bay.